There you go, we're in class 158. So, so good evening driver, we're running to a tight schedule this evening. Release the doors immediately to allow passengers to board. Well, they already did that, because that's how good I am. I need to improve my timekeeping apparently. We have a green signal to go when we're ready on the uh, main line. Hey Joy, um, we keep wrestling with this idea of unlocking because it's a fairly common thing that's done in games and uh, it provides a natural sense of progression. The problem is that everyone wants to drive different routes, everyone's got the different things they want to drive and um, quite rightly they've bought the thing so they should be able to drive it. So it's really tricky. Um, without limiting the hobby um, to something which makes you then have to do things you don't want to do to get to the things you do want to do, um, it becomes very tricky to do this kind of unlocking because we can't unlock liveries, we can't unlock locos because again the one that we've locked might be the one that the only one that you want to drive in the game so um, yeah it's tricky so we've heard on the side of staying away from that kind of mechanic at the moment yes you can do a sequence where you have to unlock scenarios so Horseshoe Curve had a sequence where um, you would unlock um, for each scenario you did unlock the next scenario so that you could do that and the feedback we got was that people simply didn't like that they wanted to just do the scenarios out of order if they wanted and if they wanted to do them in order they didn't need us forcing them to do that to figure it out for themselves so um, we've also done it on London Brighton where you had to do the introductory scenario before you would unlock the rest of the scenarios and the feedback we got there was they couldn't figure out how to play the rest of the scenarios they were all locked even though you I did tell them what they had to do so uh, no again locking is something that just uh, doesn't seem to match with what we're doing there's nothing controversial about adding multiplayer it's, uh, I'd love to see multiplayer I'm sure we'll get there eventually at some point I've got tons of other things to do first though can you drive the bullet train from Japan? Well, if someone makes the route, then you can do it. At the moment, the route doesn't exist, so unfortunately you can't. I think on UK Train Sim there's a Sanyo Shinkansen route, which uh, is quite enjoyable. Um, and uh, I think there's a Series uh, 300 or something that you can run on it as well. So. That might scratch the itch until something bigger and better comes along. Just having to manage the speed here because we're going down a hill. It is possible to join routes together if and only if the origin of the route is the same in the two routes, which essentially means that they have to have been built uh, with the same um, to be to be joined in the first place, essentially. So, hence on workshop, you'll see uh, you can. There's a new route up there which uh, one of our guys, Danny Leach, uploaded, uh, which is um, just realised that thirty limit coming. Watch what you're doing, Matt. Um, yeah, so he's joined London to Brighton and the New South London network together. Um, well, he was able to do that because those two routes were built to be joined together. Uh, or at least they were built with the same origin. Which of course means that all the relative coordinates of the, all the positions are all exactly the same. So what you do is you merge the two routes together, which is not a trivial process, but you can do it. And then you go into the route editor and you start repairing all the damage and joining all the track between the two routes up. So it's um, it is possible. I think somebody else did it with uh, West Coast Mainline North and Western Lines of Scotland. Um, 
slightly strange given the two different time periods those routes are in. Uh, but again, they were built with the same origin, so um, you can, in theory, join them together. You can turn CFR on an equipped drive, and you can turn PZB on an equipped drive. You can, you've got full access to the locomotives in the equipped drive. Hey Okonomi, good to see you back on the channel, didn't see you join there. Next stop is Langwathi in about six and a half miles. Oh yes, the Mikados, the 282s, they're lovely, aren't they, the P2s? Yeah, it's This train's only got red lights. That's interesting. Um, the only way you can make announcements to the passengers, passengers on the train is to just talk to your computer. There's no way of uh, pressing buttons at the moment to do it. Although it wouldn't surprise me if there are trains out there that can do it in uh, their third party products, but there's none of our ones on Steam that can do it. Which one is it that the um, A1 Society are doing? They're are they doing the uh, Clock of the North? Is that what? Is that the same thing? I must admit, I can't remember. It's beautiful loco though. It's going to be called Prince Charles. Yes, talking to the PC is a free feature that's actually been in there since day one with Railworks. You've always been able to do that. It has absolutely no effect in game, and that's also been in there since day one. Hey there, Mum of Two, welcome back, and Moose4675, welcome back. So we're riding on the Seven Car Line Line. We left Appleby a little while ago, we're on our way to Langwathby now, uh, driving a Class 158 in Northern Colours. And uh, I don't know where our destination is now, I've come to think about it. Let's go and have a look. Carlisle, which makes complete sense.
So time wise, we're doing pretty good actually. Um, due in at uh, Langwapi in about three and a half miles. Uh, destination, the target time is 17.16 in three seconds. And we're going to be there at 17.14, so running quite far ahead actually. Okay, Mum or two. Thanks for joining us. Have a good evening. Ooh, a shed coming in the other direction. So what did I drive first? The very first train that I drove um, was actually the Acela Express in Microsoft Train Simulator back in 2001. Now I feel old. Um, I think I probably just tried driving everything. Uh, I'm not sure I necessarily tried to learn one and tried to learn the other. I was, I was like a kid in a candy store, so I was driving everything, making a mess of it, and just learning better. And and then throughout um, time when I was at uh, running UK Train Sim. I got to meet a number of people that uh, kindly spent their time and excessive amounts of patience teaching me how to drive things properly. So, big thanks go to them. <laughs> MSTS rocked. MSTS was fantastic piece of software. It did really, really well considering how long, how long in the tooth it got. Um, yes, although it does look dated now. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a number of steam engine videos that are up there now, so uh, if you want to learn how to drive the steam engine, just try watching some of those, and uh, I do try and do talk commentary as I talk, as I do them, um, so that you can try and understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, um, just to try and uh, try and pass it on, because I think steam is really underappreciated in the game. It's my, certainly my favourite. I think there's absolutely tons and tons of gameplay with steam engines because they're quite unusual to drive, they're a bit more involved, you've got so many more things to control and drive. It's not just fire and forget. I mean it's one five eight I'm falling asleep driving. Um, so but they are tricky beasts to drive the steam engines, so I'm not surprised people have problems with them. Um, so hopefully when you watch the videos you'll actually uh, yeah, you'll be able to learn some uh, tips and techniques and then improve upon them and do better. So tell me about the problems you're having with electric. Let's see if we can get those problems solved for you. Talk, t talk us through where you're, where you're finding difficulties. Start off with what, what locos exactly are you driving, and what routes are you driving them on? So the 86 and the 87 is in um, the, uh, the 87 is in West Coast Mainline over Shap. Um, though that 86 and 87 are two of my favourite electrics to drive because again there's so much more to do it's not just this uh, fire and forget like some of these ones like this particular one for example which is nice and easy to drive but once you've got the hang of the more difficult ones it's a bit sedentary. Let's get the doors open this is Langwathby and uh, be a couple of minutes that we stopped here because we arrived very early Okay, I think that's a good idea. Um, we're not going to have time to do it tonight, but hold me to it. We'll do the Challenger tomorrow night, okay? I like that idea. I spent a long time working on the uh, the particle effects for when we really re-released the Challenger and the Big Boy, and uh, I do like driving them.
So which, which train is it, Okonomi? Which, um, which locomotive and which route is it that you're actually using? Because that will help me to understand what might be going on in that particular train. For example, is it the ACS 64 running on the New York New Haven line? Yeah, the biggest thing most people got wrong with the 86 Nico was that um, when you um, cause the ammeter to have to drop down, you must notch the loco down. Um, so you put it into off or you put it into run down and um, you need to wait for the notches to come down because if you try and apply more power again before that happens you just get absolutely nothing out of the loco at all you just have to wait for the uh, the notch meter to finally make its way to zero once it's made its way to zero then you can go yes good advice there from John definitely thoroughly read the manuals uh, although I think what I will do is uh, I'll do a bit of a class 87 on West Coast Mainline over Shap, I think. That way we can include the um, zero, um, zero, the uh, null power sections, so that you can see how you manage going through uh, those as well. Ah, high speed one. So you're running on London to Faversham, which means you're probably driving the class 395. Um, so one of the key things to remember the class 395. Well, there's two things to remember. One of them is the alerter uh, or the DSD, uh, which will go off every 60 seconds I think it is if you don't touch the controls um, and if you fail to respond within two or three seconds then all the brakes will come on um, so you need to watch out for that and if you're in external views you won't hear it so stay in the cab until you've learned to get familiar with that next up is the uh, when you're going if you break the speed limit um, then all the brakes will come on you must be abiding by the speed limit which shows in cab, not the speed limit that shows on the HUD. Because what the HUD is showing you is the maximum possible speed of the track. And in cab, um, the uh, the egg box display is actually going to be showing you the um, speeds that you should be uh, following. So if you go on to the YouTube channel, um, one of the early ones that I did actually was the Class 395 on London Faversham. And... Um, you should be able to see from there. I, I do a run actually across the entire length of the route from St Pancras to Faversham. Um, so you'll be able to see uh, all the things that happened and how I dealt with them. Uh, and hopefully that will explain how to uh, drive the run. It also includes the power changeover section, which happens at Ebbsfleet when you switch from overhead to third rail or vice versa, depending on which way you're going. So hopefully there's something there which will help you. If it doesn't, let me know and um, I'll, uh, I'll try and provide you with a bit more help. There's no but fields up here. Hey Castanius, thanks for joining us on the channel. So if anyone on the channel hasn't already, um, don't forget to go and um, look us up on YouTube. Uh, details are on the uh, on the about page, or you, the uh, the details are up there and then, uh, yeah, that way. Um, oops, we're speeding. Next stop is Lazenby and Kirk Oswald in just under three miles. Uh, yeah, find us on uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook particularly. Um, so on YouTube, I do archives of everything that uh, is shown in the show uh, so that you can, if there's anything you missed or want to go and have a look at, then it's all there. And then on Facebook is just where I natter incessantly and uh, let people know what I'm going to be doing and what I'm thinking and sometimes that's disturbing.
Ah, hi Nico. Right, I know who you are now. <laughs> so was the video that I did on the Duchess a uh, help? Did that explain uh, how to drive the engine better? It's a lovely loco, so uh, it'd be great if you can get the best out of it. Excellent. So uh, it sounds like you've got the tools now to uh, help get the best out of that loco as well, and I really enjoy it. That's okay, Dark. You go ahead, lurk, enjoy, and uh, yes, they hear from me soon. So this section we section we don't seem to have driven quite so well. Um, we're about eight seconds from being late, so I'm coming in a bit hotter than I normally would. For a minute, I'd lined up with the end of the platform. <laughs> so we've got Armthwaite next, and then Carlisle. John, have you heard the um, the Hornby Duper Gloucester uh, with the twin track sound, TTS? Uh, we picked one of those up for the uh, One House Model Railway and uh, it's a lovely model with an absolutely superb sound set. Considering it's TTS, which is the budget sound, so I was really not expecting very much, but it's actually probably one of the best sound sets I've heard for a double O gauge steam engine. So yes, next station is Armathwaite, about five miles, and at this point in time we're, uh, we're already going to be late, so that's great. The thing to do here is going to be to push it to 60.9 and see if we can't gain that time back.
welcome to the channel there, Kilil, welcome back. I'm very good, thank you very much. Just enjoying a bit of settling Carlisle. How are you doing? Just pushing the speed here, trying to claw back some time since we seem to be uh, losing time from the minute we started. Well, so far we've managed to pull about 20 seconds back, we've got about another 20 seconds to go to be on time. One mile to the stop though. coming in just about on time, we're going to be a few seconds late but I'm not going to complain about that. It doesn't want to stop. Oh! Tell a throttle on what we're doing. And that, my friends, is called not paying attention to what you're doing. So much for gaining all that time back and then wasting it doing rubbish like this. Stop us much better when it's not got the throttle on. Let's 
Throw out the anchors! <laughs> Well, I got a tick for it, which means we might actually get a tick for the scenario if we can get the last stop. Last stop in Carlisle, 10 miles. Strangely, it doesn't have an ETA, which is interesting. Oh, another shed. There's lots of sheds on the line tonight. Sorry, train boy. Yes, I did. You're back on your home internet. Good. So you've got to watch the stream then without all the interruptions. That's good to know. I think you logged in just when I was um, making a mess of stopping at that last station. So apologies. <laughs> Well, I don't know if I'm succeeding in concentrating. So we've got the Challenger down for a look-see tomorrow. What else would we feel like would like to see in tomorrow's lineup? So, has anyone been to the Dovetail Facebook page recently and seen the canoe cover photo? What do you think? Feedback. I've only got dovetail stuff from Steam. Any of that stuff, but I don't have anything outside of that, I'm afraid. Ooh. 
Auto coach on Falmer for 56XX on Mardin. Ooh, yeah, there's some good options there. I fancy the 56XX on Mardi if I'm honest. Maybe do the auto coach another time. York to Newcastle, A1. Oh, Tornado. Um, yeah, that's another good option. It's interesting everyone's coming up with uh, steam though. Uh, ice, we like the ice train. Yeah, I quite like the ice train. We could do the ice to Hamburg to Hanover, I think. That would be quite nice. So what's happening here? Oh yes, we're going through the, uh, the sidings. Yeah, I must admit, I quite fancy going back to the ACS 64 and uh, maybe downloading a workshop scenario for that one. Uh, I'll go and have a dig around Alfaba's uh, wonderful collection and see if I can find uh, some, some good examples on the uh, New York New Haven line, which is probably one of my favourite American lines. Four and a half miles to Carlisle Platform 5. Wagon challenge on Mardi. Did you not see what happened the last time I did that? <clears throat> Welcome to the channel, Tykin. Um, yes, I will do the uh, wagon challenge on Mardi once I've practiced it some more and remembered how to get it up the hill. I used to be able to get it up the hill with uh, bags of steam to spare and bags of time to spare, but I'd forgotten how to do that. One moment. Someone stolen the hanky. They actually have. That's no good. I'm afraid there's no maglev lines, yeah? No, I don't know. Oh, I've done it. Press that button again. Thanks for the follow there, Tykin. Much appreciated. Uh, no, I don't have uh, Team Speaker, I'm afraid. I just natural on this. That's not so good, but you'll get used to it. It'll be fine. <laughs> Looks like we're coming up towards uh, Carlisle now. We've got different speed limits. So as uh, we get to all of the junctions, probably around the London Road area. I've taken the throttle off this time, so hopefully the train will behave more the way I would expect it to. Greetings there, ACML. Welcome back to the channel. Looks like we've got us an amber light coming up there. We've slowed down a teeny bit too fast.
Welcome back, new image. So we're just joining on to the uh, the other side there. We've got London Road sidings over there to the right. Well, for those of you that had MSTS, the original start location that was uh, so well known is uh, just up here on the left. And we've got a red light on the uh, signal just at the bridge there. What that probably means is we're waiting for a service to come down the hill because there's a single track section going up to Carlisle Station. So until the uh, the service that's cleared down gets out of our way, we're stuck here waiting for it to come out to uh, allow us to go up. So yes, this point here, kind of here anyway, is roughly where the um, MSTS version of the, uh, the route where the uh, explore the route started. Hey Nico, yeah, the double header water bug I think was fixed in 14. Um, I think it was 14 that one was fixed in. And it was retested again in 15 because there was some suspicion it had crept back. But uh, no, we were able to uh, run uh, trains for a considerable long time without any problems. So uh, it should all be good. You'll be fine with your challenges and your big boys that uh, always had that problem uh, for in the past. So it looks like the service is coming down the hill now. Yeah, there it is. It's this one here. It'd be a 158, I would expect. Being two car. Here it comes, so we'll be able to get going shortly once it's closed the section and the dispatcher lets us go. I'm not aware there was anything updated on Steam tonight. Um, I mean, last night there was the, um, I think the patch went out, um, but uh, other than that, I'm not aware of any other updates. I just, uh, don't know you mentioned it, I, don't, I think I might have had an update tonight, but I'm on the beta program, so I tend to get updates regular to multiple times during the day as well. There we go.
Uh, the patch to the game was just a very small fix to um, fix the problem. Steam have changed the way that the API allows the game to talk to the product pages and so forth for the in-game store and um, the update was just um, changing the game to uh, keep in line with the changes on Steam. It's only a tiny little fix. It's just an urgent one we need to get out. So looks like there's a shed waiting in the uh, in Carlisle Citadel. I suspect we're going to be using one of those platforms on the right hand side there. Hey Makovsky, welcome to the channel. We're just finishing this scenario and I'm going to uh, get the next one running, which uh, was going to be the air to Stranra, uh, so that we could see some thunders and thunder and lightning. Fantastic. Right, I'm going to switch over to change changing route panel. Okay, now let's find that scenario. 